Jeffrey Clifton Brown. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for allowing me to take part in this uh, series of heartfelt tributes uh, to uh, His Royal Highness Prince Philip. On behalf of my Cotswolds constituents, who I have the honour to represent, my sincere condolences go to Her Majesty the Queen on the very sad loss of her devoted husband and consort of over 70 years. His Royal Highness Prince Philip was a husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather who will be hugely missed, not only by his huge family, but by the country he served so loyally and many members of the Commonwealth throughout the world. My right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, and indeed my right honourable and gallant friend, uh, mentioned the Duke's distinguished war record. His generation endured the suffering of war where the bravery of our armed forces meant that Prince Philip hugely respected them for the rest of his life. It was this early experience of sacrifice and duty that reinforced his dedication to Her Majesty the Queen and the nation he served so loyally throughout his long life. There is no doubt that Her Majesty the Queen's enormously successful and long reign has been considerably assisted by the Duke's constant loyalty and wise counsel. However, he has earned his own place in the history of the British nation for his achievements in helping young people through his worldwide Duke of Edinburgh's awards scheme, a legacy of more than 60 years. And there's nothing more important than developing the skills and opportunities for young people, here and abroad, which included his presidency of the National Playing Fields Association, now known as the Fields in Trust. The Duke was also a very early champion of the environment, helping to form the Australian Conservation Foundation and, as many members have said, helping Peter Scott form the World Wildlife Fund. I, amongst many other colleagues, had the honour of meeting Prince Philip at a garden party where we had a short conversation about our shared interests in the countryside, farming and the environment. As my rival and friend for Gainsborough said, he had a deep thinking mind and he realised that the whole of the natural world is interconnected. If you damage it in one place, it comes out somewhere else. So he was a no-nonsense, humorous and down-to-earth person who characteristically requested not to have a state funeral. He was always there on an important occasion and his death means there is now an irreplaceable void in our nation's affairs. But his legacy and foresight will continue to live on. May he rest in peace. Yeah.